Hello, this is Joe McGee. Welcome to our podcast. Make sure that you subscribe and please share the podcast with your friends. That is the number one way you can help us reach people with God's love and healing. We love you guys. Hope you enjoy the podcast. Hey, everybody. It's Joe and Angel. Welcome to another Mailbag Monday where Angel and I take some time and answer questions. I've been texted in, mailed in, and sent in by computer. And so we have a stack. So we really try to fill these out as best we can. So we've got a good looking list today. So, Angel, let's jump in. Okay, Joe, my husband and I are in our early 50s and have been married almost six years. Before marriage, she was my platonic best friend for eight years before we got married. After marriage, I learned that he has a mental issue that doesn't allow him to function sexually, and it isn't a physical issue that is the cause. I've been without physical affection for him for almost the entire duration of our marriage, Mm. including a simple hug. The terrible part is that he refuses to discuss or talk about anything. I am feeling lonely, and I can't tell you how many times I've cried, begged, and screamed. I just don't know what to do anymore. Do you have any advice? You need some counseling for him sometime because that's wrong. Uh, For a male, uh, two things. That's embarrassing. Uh, All men deal with... uh, uh, What's the word? The ability to not function anymore. And so <laughs> that's why there's a commercial every time you watch a ball game, you know, Viagra's making tons of money. They got their own race car uh, and it's a real deal. Uh, it's a real thing. But what he's doing is um, he, w- he won't face, he won't address it. So first Corinthians seven, it says that's his job. Uh, his body belongs to you, not him. And uh, that's we teach in our marriage seminar. You know, it's not where both of you in the same mood it has nothing to do with mood. You know, if I'm in the mood, get yourself in here, get naked, and let's then we're going to have sex. And that's the marriage response. Your body doesn't belong to you; it belongs to me. My body belongs to Angel. She should never have to ask to have sex. Any spouse that has to ask, we got a problem. And so hell's coming because God made men and women to have sex. That's why all the body parts do what they do. People and people get a sort of shocked in our marriage. Some I said, you know, uh, the orgasm was God's idea. If there were no orgasms, nobody would have sex. We'd have died off several thousand years ago. Somebody said, well, it's Saturday. I guess we got to do it. No, people do it because it feels good. That's why they do it. It feels good. That's why there's so much saying it feels good. There's pleasure in sin for a season. It's supposed to be done in marriage. But if you're married, you're not doing it. We got a double problem. That's that's not right. And so. uh <laughs> we've dealt with many couples one couple one time god been married almost 10 years had three kids and uh, i'm at the seminars joking i talked to the seminar and the pastor told me this is a good man he needs some help so we sit down and talk so what's the problem so well i got a great wife uh, i got three kids they're really happy uh but uh but she's never had an orgasm i said what in 10 years of marriage she's never had an orgasm and so she'll have sex but she just lays on the bed and there's just not much to it I said, well, that's not right. If you had her to a doctor, oh, yeah. Yeah, they recommended she take up horseback riding or do something. Like, I, I'm not making this up. I mean, you can't believe what you deal with. I said, well, well that's not wrong. I mean, that's wrong. And he said, well, I'll be honest. I'm starting to have a wandering eye for other women in the church because I've got no passion in my own bed. I said, well, that's not right. God meant passion to be there between the both of them. And so I recommended a, a counseling group and a Another doctor, go see a female doctor. For her, she needs to see a female doctor, not a male doctor, because they understand a little bit better, I think. Long story short, three months later, they're having sex for the first time in 10 years of the marriage. It's like she was right. There was nothing medically wrong with her. Doctor said everything's there. It was him. He, he didn't have, he had no clue uh, how to bring a woman to pleasure. His daddy had never taught him anything. And there are many, many men, especially in our country, that for all the porn that's on TV or media, there's no instruction on how this is supposed to work. So there's no godly men teaching younger men, guys, this is what you do and how you do it. And I tell you, <laughs> you still come by the way, guys, ladies go first. You don't go first. She always goes first. And so I got all the scriptures for that. You can get it, from, go to my website and download it for free. And so, but uh, yeah, that's a husband, not that's wrong. That's, that's a sin that's like a thief. And so that's too many words. And that's all I got to say about that. When I was growing up, uh, my pastor would say that if you withhold from your spouse, 
uh, you are forcing them to have an affair yep. and, and it is dead wrong. Yep. And, uh, and if it is pride, that just would, as guilty as one who had the affair. Yeah. Cause it's pride. And that's pride that was, is forcing him not to get, uh, help because it, this is not that uncommon. I know personally, uh, we know lots of people it's, that have been through very similar situations and, uh, it, it's sad and it's more rampant that, but it makes the problem is <clears throat> the focus of your marriage and being a united unit, you leave and the focus is, well, I'm not getting my needs met. Da, 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 and it, it just changes the whole dynamic of, of the relationship. So. Now, and you have to understand men and women are totally different. Men, when they first get married, men, their sex drive running a hundred mile an hour. Women, it's, it's kind of coming up the back stretch. Somewhere around the middle of marriage, man's sex drive starts to drop off to nothing, and the woman picks up to a peak. And so that's why it creates a lot of marriage problems. So if you read your Bible, no bit what you're supposed to do. My job is to meet my spouse's sexual need, regardless of what I'm doing or what I'm feeling. That's my job. But there's also a thing where, well, you take care of your health, go see your doctor, get a pill if you need to, you know, do some exercise, do something to keep yourself working, because it's going to create some problems. Yeah, and it's just not how God intended no. marriage to be. So I, I used to mess with couples in our marriage. So I said, listen, when you go to bed with your wife, you can turn out the lights and shut the door. God can see in the dark. He's in there and he's watching. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to mess you up, but God's looking. <laughs> and basically, he said in Proverbs 5, 6, and 7, do it, do it well and do it often. Basically, what God said about sex in marriage. So it's a good thing not to be avoided, not to be misused. It's a very serious thing. It is. And it's heartbreaking when, when yeah. a couple is not united in, in that. But like I said, it's not that uncommon, but there's no. lots of help you can get out there. I mean, maybe you should go to your pastor alone and just yeah. see or get some counseling at the church. But, um, you know, uh, the first thing, though, is he has to want help. Yes. If he doesn't. <clears throat> Then it will probably escalate. You, at some point. First, thing, very first thing, you're going to have somehow, <laughs> sometime, pretty soon, just be just straight up honest with him. Honey, I love him, but having no sex, this is messing with me. I, I, I need sex. Every human made by God needs sex. That's why God gave spouses. You know, that's why there are very few really single people. You know. You read all the people in the Bible, God intended for 99.9% of all people to get married. Not good for man to be alone. God has not changed his mind. It's not just sex, but that's a big part of it. So get it taken care of. But you got to confront. So, honey, this is not right. So you can either change, get help, or I'm going to go get help. I don't want to embarrass you. But I got to do something. This isn't right. Right. Okay, Joe, many people are confused about the state of our country. I'm struggling with finding the balance between living in faith and not fear. At times I feel like I'm doing good, but then I feel overwhelmed. How do I solidify my position? Well, it's going to take the same thing. It takes for everything. It takes faith. And so people, you know, you have two kinds. I remember I, I worked uh, as a believer on a church staff, uh, one church, about 3000 people. In one year, we registered over 1,200 of our church members to vote. 1,200 of our <laughs> Christian members, adults, were not even registered to vote. They don't vote. They just gripe and they complain. Thumbs suck. You're supposed to vote. It's, it's, it's a democracy. Actually, it's a republic. And so the ones that get into office are the ones who have the most votes. It's not the best person that gets elected. It's the person with the most votes. <laughs> So, so with that in mind, it's like, I pray for my country every day. God said, you, I want you to pray for those in authority and so that you can live a quiet and peaceful life. God told Daniel to pray for Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar is going to turn into a bit of goat and eat grass for seven years. But Daniel prayed for him three times a day. I'm to pray for those in authority, whether Republican, Democrat, independent. My job as a Christian <laughs> to pray. I'm not worried about the, the government. Uh, Jesus is Lord of my life. God's going to order my steps, a uh, number of my days. He, he, he's directing my path. God's in control of my life. It doesn't matter who's in the White House, who's in Congress, who's in the Senate. I'm a believer. Do you understand the new Christians, the early Christians, Romans, they had, they had to send their kids to Roman schools. The, the, the early believers, if you just read the book of Acts, they're going to secular schools that taught heathen gods. I mean, I've read so many history books. 
the, the early Christians, you're going to school, they're teaching about these, all these crazy statues they have, and, and they're trying to, they're learning this. And so I used to tell people, hey, learn what you need to learn and make an A and get over it. Uh, when Daniel, Shadrach, and Abednego went into captivity, they had to learn, they had to go to school for three years, to learn the heathen religion, the heathen gods, the heathen stuff. They did everything they were asked to do except eat the food that they were told to eat. They said, no, I've been commanded specifically not to eat that food. I'll learn your crazy religion, your crazy language. I know what I believe. It's not going to change what I believe, but there's some things I cannot do. And so know what the word says is just stick with that and just pray for your country. We live. I don't care who you are. We live in the greatest day of human history. We live in the last days. God said, this is the greatest day in the world to be alive. So it's a great day to be married, to have kids, have grandkids, have a business. We live in the greatest time because every time of every generation had to use their faith. Back in the 30s, the 40s, the 50s, I don't care when you were born, every generation had to use their faith. We get to believe God. There's been wars, rumors, wars, and famines, and earthquakes. Jesus said that, but he said he'd be Lord of our life. So I don't know what's going to ram me. We've got it made. So keep your attitude right about that. Bible also says that there's three things that'll choke out the word from your heart. Mm. And it's the, the cares of this world is the first thing that he, that he names. Yeah. <laughs> so if you take on that thing, and so instead of letting the word have the precedence in your life, then you're, it's, it's, if, you know, if all you're doing is watching TV and listening to doom and gloom or your friends and reading the paper and social media and everything else, then <clears throat> and you're not balancing that with the word or giving the word higher precedence in that than the cares of this world. And then the Bible says the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things. But the cares of this world is getting under the anxiety of yeah. all of the stuff that's going on today. Things that aren't in our control to fix. But what is in our control is to speak the word. My steps are ordered by the Lord. The voice of a stranger. I don't know. Uh, you know, I can with confidence make the right steps. Yes. I can trust that God is yep. going before me. Your word says, if any man lacks wisdom, let him ask of God. And I'm asking. So. <clears throat> There's a lot of things that you can do to help combat that. And I, and some people will think I've been accused. Well, you live in la la land. You're, you're hiding what's going on. I'm not hiding anything. I've read the Bible, read through several times, reading through again right now. We live in, in some tough times. And so the cares this last, the deceitful rich, everything angel said, it's going to come. But I'm supposed to think on certain things. Think on these things. Whatever is lovely, honest, just, <laughs> praiseworthy, the good report. Don't think on those other things. Those other things trying to exalt themselves against the knowledge of God. So I've told my own family, don't watch the news. Shut that thing off. You know, I read a paper every morning, just get the highlights, what's going on, know how to pray. But I'm not going to feed on it. I'm not going to watch some depressing movie or some, read some depressing novel. Like, guard your heart with all diligence for the issues of life. So we live in that day where it's the greatest day of human history according, for the church, but the world is in a mess. And, but the Bible told us it would be a mess the last days. And so many, many men and women of faith thousands years before us have had to go through the same thing. They made it through. So just get your eyes focused on the right thing. We don't live in La La Land. Let's, you know, brush your teeth, comb your hair, take a bath, you know, mow your grass, do the laundry, you know, go to work, pay your bills, be normal. And then eventually other people will ask you about the hope that's in you. Aren't you afraid? No, no, I rolled my cares over to God. God cares for me. Aren't you concerned about what's going on? No, no, I got a book that told me the last days there would be perilous times. <laughs> I already knew it was coming, but we're going to be fine. We're, we're the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're going to be fine. All right, Joe, I own my own business franchise. How do I know when it's time to close the doors or bite the bullet and take out loans to keep the business running? I have been helped by our family finances book by your family finances book tremendously. And I would love your perspective about believing God for business finances. Well, you know, uh, I just have to answer for myself. You know, we've got a corporation. Uh, I used to John McGee ministries.com. We got a publishing company. Uh, so we've got a business. And so, you know, it would be like saying, well, ain't you think we ought to just shut the business down? Cause it's looking kind of bad. No, I'm not going to shut nothing down. No, I'm not changed some things we do or how we do it. I remember two years ago when we couldn't travel for three months, uh, Angel came with the idea of having a podcast. Hey, Joe, we got to do a podcast. I don't even know what a podcast is. I don't do stuff like that. I'm born in a different time. So we started a podcast. And so eight months later, after we start the podcast, I think we had 
two and a half million hits in one month. Well, we found another, we found another stream that had fish in it. You know, we were still doing what we were called to do. We just found a different way and a better way of doing it. And we're still doing that today. We just find different and better ways of doing what we're doing. That's what this is right now. What you're listening to us right now, a mailbag Monday, find a different way. And so, uh, got to get creative. Don't shut down. Just we call it amend and repair. The Bible said amend and repair. You know, we're going to amend and repair. It's like the marriage thing in revelation. I told the church at Ephesus, he loved him, bragged on him more than anybody. said, I got one thing. And guess what? You've left your first love. What? You, you don't do what you used to do. You've fallen out of love. So he said three things. You need to remember what it was like when you first started in a business or you got married, you have a life. Remember what it was like. Repent that you left it. Repent that you left what you first had. Repent that you left what God gave you and start redoing what you did when it was working. So just keep doing what you're doing to find a better way of doing it. No, I don't believe in pulling back. God's people never pulled back. They never withdrew. They always advance. Every story in the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, it's advancing, never retreating, never pulling back, never getting into the commune somewhere, hiding under a rock. No, God's bold. His people are as bold as a lion. So get out and do something. Be creative. And I mean, great, great things. Find out the people are doing what you're doing and see what they're doing. I always check out other ministries. You know, I can go online or I can go visit. Angel's always talking to other people. And she said, every day, I think every day, Angel's go, hey, Joe, I've heard about this. I was talking to so-and-so today, and they're doing this. I thought, man, I never thought about that. And so don't just get isolated. And pulling back is isolation. Just stick your neck out a little bit further. <laughs> I think that's a good answer. <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, I was raised with my dad was an entrepreneur, mm-hmm. and uh, it was a lot of times feast and a lot of times famine. <laughs> And uh, I've heard people say, well, yeah, Joe, that works for you because you're in the ministry and everything else. But just because he's anointed to preach the gospel, it takes us the same faith it takes you yeah. to walk it out. Still takes faith. Yes. And so uh, there are no freebies, guys. There are no freebies. I heard somebody say one time that the line between the jagged edge and the cutting edge is very fine. Whoa. And so I think that uh, the same faith that you apply to your personal family and your personal finances, you know, you have to do that there as well and uh, uh, start believing God. Sow some seed. Uh, Well, uh, let me tell you what I told my kids their whole life. And I was a school administrator. If I followed you around for the next 24 hours, if I could follow you around and, and tape everything that comes out of your mouth, just record it. If after the next 24 hours, if I could play back to you, everything's come out of your mouth. Would you let me do that? Everything you said in public and private, even in your own mind, you didn't come out in words because there are angels in heaven recording every idle deed and every idle thought. Your life is a result of what you think about. That's why the Bible says, think on these things. You got to control what you think about. You have to control that. Think on these things, whatever's lovely, whatever's honest, whatever's just, whatever's trustworthy. God told us how to think. He knows what's coming. God saw this thing come before he ever made the earth. He said, I got a plan for you. You got it made. It won't bother you. It, it's like they came to accuse Jesus, but they, they, they couldn't find anything guilty. They tried to stone him. They tried to push him up a cliff. They could find no guilt. That's why Jesus gave his life. They didn't find anything wrong with it. He gave his life. And so as believers, you know, now we got it made. So well, we have to control what we think. So guard your heart. Yeah. And, you know, well, when, when, when I had a church one time, I remember, um, going in and talking to the youth pastor and saying, you know, how many youth would you like to run at the end of this oh, year? This is good. And he said, Oh, I'd like a hundred. I said, I think 150 is better. <laughs> and um, I said, so what are you going to do to make that happen? Cause I can do some things. I can support you financially. I can give you opportunities here at the church, but what are you going to do? And so God will meet us, but we have to do our part. And our part is like Joe said, dig it in, mm. uh, you know, going early, staying late. And if you're, if it doesn't say what kind of franchise it is, but no, doesn't matter. Yeah. But, um, you Look, know, God said, if you draw close to me, I'll draw close to you. You ask a question, I'll answer. But if you look at me, I'll look back. God only moves out of faith. <clears throat> so what are you doing? What are you thinking? What are you praying? You know, what are you praying over your business? What are you praying over your life? Like give God something to work with. Because I used to tell my kids, I gave all my kids, they were all broke, all those recorders. So I said, carry this home, hang it around your neck, 
sleep with it, bring it next day. I said, what if this tape recorder had been playing the last 24 hours? Would you let us play it in front of everybody? What's been coming out of your mouth? Because that's what God's moving on or not moving on. The devil's either moving on your words or heaven's moving on your words. Right. What words have you given God to work with? What are you saying? Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the weak say I'm strong. Let the poor say I'm rich. Call those things that be not as though they are. That's how God created the universe. One day he said, light be, and boom, light was. How did we get this thing? Somebody said something. We're people of God. We work the same way. It's not some goofy religion. It's not a magic wand. It's faith. Faith speaks. What are you doing? Well, I'm saying my marriage is better. Well, it doesn't look better. Well, it's going to be better. I'm going to think different, talk different. It's better. I got a great marriage. My wife loves me. She wants to suck the lips off my face. And people laugh all the time because we do so many seminars. So listen, guys, you got to do it by faith because some days you get at me think, dear God, why am I married? Why did I get married? <laughs> and then some days you get to say, oh, my God, God, you're so good to me. Man, look who I married. Everybody deals with it. There's waves. It's like an ocean. But you control the weather with your mouth. I am, I am one happy man, you know. I am, I am one blessed man. Peace. Well, you got lucky. No, I didn't. There's no such thing as luck. I married a Holy ghost woman who scares the devil when she wakes up <laughs> and she loves me for whatever reason. Angel loves me. And people say, well, you, you're just meant for one another. No, we weren't. We're as opposite as daylight and dark. Came from two different cultures, two different worlds. We are in love, but we know how to talk too. We know how to act. And by the way, we know how to repent quick because I mean, we first got married. We say, you know, I told Angel, listen, Angel. I know you like me a lot and you love me, but I'm not perfect. I'm going to make mistakes, but I promise if I make a mistake, I'll be quick to repent and quick to forgive. I promise that I will do that. And so we've said some <laughs> bad things, done some, made some dumb decisions. We had to realize, honey, I'm sorry. That was the wrong thing to do. That was the wrong thing to say. What'd you do? Well, it's under the blood. Let's move on that line. Um, I will say this one time years ago, I uh, put, I filled out a deposit slip uh, for hundred thousand dollars, and I stuck it on my wall. And everybody, every I told everybody that worked in the administrative office, every time you walk by this, put your hand on it and just say, "Thank you, God. We're in agreement that that's coming in. That that's coming in." And you know, I'd done that for so long, and we'd had the church for a couple of years, and this couple asked us to go out to lunch. And I didn't even know the couple. I'd never met them. And uh, and they gave us a check for $100,000. Mm-hmm. And so you, it didn't happen overnight. Nope. It took years. Yep. But I still, I had that, I had that, that goal in mind before me. By the way, I got to do that again. But I'm yeah, up yeah. the ante this time. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! But so God will meet you where your faith is. Yes. So, and he wants you to be a success. Yes. Yes. And he wants God's you to be a success for, you. for your family and so that you can bless the kingdom. And so um, God is not trying to punish you. No, that, that's a crazy thing. God's for everybody. He is. God's for every sinner that's, that's born going to hell. God's trying to save me, send his son to die for them. He gave the Holy Spirit to help his, his church. It is a great God's for us. He's not against us. Don't ever think, well, maybe God didn't want me to do it. God will let you know what he wants you to do. We're his sheep. He's our sheep. We'll hear his voice. So don't worry about that. Uh, listen, a lot of people have asked us, I would love for Joe to come to my church. Well, it's not that hard. All you have to do <laughs> is maybe if there's Joe does a Friday funny, or maybe it's a mailbag Monday or something. Mm-hmm. If you like, and you see us on Facebook, just tag your pastor on that. And just encourage him, and because uh, we would love to come, but we can't come without an invitation. That's all it so, takes, though. That's so, all it takes. But we love you guys, and uh, thank you for watching. Don't yes. forget on YouTube, share this with your friends, yeah. and uh, help us get the word out. And know? we are everywhere, believe it or not, we are. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so uh, we love you guys, and we will see you next time. God bless, guys. Be sure to join us Monday, Wednesday, and Friday to hear more of what God can do in your life. It's got a great future for you and your family. We're here to help you get there. Please make sure you visit Joe McGee Ministries on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. There you find all of our Friday funny videos and other encouraging resources for you and your family. While you're at it, be sure to visit JoeMcGee.com. We have all sorts of materials, books, DVDs, you name it, all there to help you, your marriage, and your family succeed.